Hi, I'm uh, Neil with Trip the Road, and uh, first video 2023. As you saw, we got a lot more videos out in 2022, and uh, I hope to make more this year. I got a lot going on. I'm actually getting married uh, in June, so I'm going to be pretty busy with that. I know I said I'd kind of pick up the pace of videos, but it's a pretty important life event, and uh, I won't have a lot of free time to edit. So I thought I'd do something a little different here. Um, I'm going to just kind of talk, and I'm going to talk about the top five tools I bought in 2022 that I'm excited to use in 2023. And number three might shock or surprise you. So let's get right into it. So back in September, we went to North Dakota to... Let me grab this. I don't know how to... I don't know how to cut this in, so this is gonna be a little choppy, whatever. So back in September, we went to North Dakota to pick up a Corvette for my buddy Zach, and I do wanna edit that into a video. We didn't get enough B-roll, so I think we're gonna do kind of a round table at the bar here at some point and just talk about the trip, um, all the funny moments, all the moments that we ran into problems, and supplement it with the B-roll that we shot. Uh, but we'll, we, but while we were at the uh, Mall of America in Minneapolis, Minnesota, we went to the um, Carhartt store. Sorry, I was getting Carhartt and Carlisle mixed up. And I picked up one of these. And this was a complete impulse buy. It was 25 bucks. I was like, do I really need this? Uh, but let me show you. And these have been around for probably centuries. I mean, this is a very primitive toolbox, but um, I've used it a ton for junkyard runs as well as for uh, road trips. So I got my uh, serpentine belt tool. Uh, the shadow over here uh, likes to throw serpentine belts. I've replaced the idler, so it hasn't done it in a while, but um, it seems to go through idlers every few years, and, and uh, I just try and keep one of these on board. But that's not the tool I'm talking about here. I'm just talking about this whole pack. And uh, it's really handy. I mean, I've, I've used it at the junkyard a few times now. I just put my most common uh, tool sizes and I put some sockets in these little pockets here. Got my screwdrivers. I usually have pliers and uh, vice grips and all that in here, but I can just roll it up. I think this end rolls up. And clips and you can adjust these. It's soft. I'm really a hard case kind of guy, but this is one soft case design I really like. You can pick it up with the handle, and uh, it's great. And in the junkyard, I'll stick parts through the side of it, and I can carry them around one-handed while I'm carrying something uh, heavier in the yard. So that's number five, I guess. I guess we're counting down. So this was number five. Number four, let's talk about something not so automotive, but this was also an impulse buy. The Milwaukee M18 electric chainsaw. Now, now there's a big debate as to whether these can replace gas equipment. Let me grab a battery over here. And while I get a lot of people like their gas saws, their gas mowers, especially their gas generators, um, I absolutely hate using a gas chainsaw. I can never get them to start. I always seem to blow them up. Um, the clutches always slip. They're loud. They're stressful to use because you're trying to listen for the tree coming down. So I figured I'd try one of these, and, and the initial cost was pretty expensive. I mean, the saw itself was around $500, and then two properly sized batteries to run the saw was about another $200. So this is a $700 setup. But once you put the battery in and take this cover off and take the brake off, it is immediately ready to start cutting down trees. And uh, I had a lot of trees cut down in my yard about two years ago, and they cut them into five foot lengths for me. They gave me a good price, but they were just, they were in the way I needed to move them. So I went and bought this, and I've been incredibly happy with it. 
Um, if you're looking for a really good chainsaw and you only have to cut uh, a couple trees down a year, or maybe, maybe you cut down a lot of trees and you have a few batteries or you have the budget for a few batteries, I like this way more than a gas saw. I don't think it's quite lumberjack level. Like I don't think you would replace a, uh, an Echo or steel Echo saw with one of these. Uh, but for the average homeowner, I think this is far better. It doesn't gum up from sitting. It's ready to go almost immediately every time. Sometimes I have to add chain oil, but uh, that's easy enough. And I'll, uh, I'll overlay a quick video on the screen of us cutting down a tree on our farm with one of these, as well as with a pretty nice comparable size uh, gas chainsaw. So you can kind of see the difference. <laughs> Forty-six seconds. Nice. All right, here, Ryan, hold the camera. Forty-six seconds. Ready? Yeah. Four. Now he's getting into the meat. That took 36 seconds. <laughs> <laughs> a little quicker there. <laughs> All right, let's try with this one. Uh, the blade's dull, but a little bit more surface area, so might work a little bit faster. Oh. Ready? All right, yeah. Took 46 seconds. <laughs> Damn, it's fucked. Well, two, two against one. I think this thing's got some kick to it. If anything, it at least keeps up with the big boys. But uh, that's a good comparison. Yeah, I'm yeah. gonna sharpen this, and then we're gonna do it later. All right. If you if you sharpen, we'll do another rematch. Three. Haha. <laughs> Just kidding. I hate these. For automotive use, these do have their place, but what I really want to show you is one of these. And actually, we need this car battery to properly demonstrate it. Fun fact, this car battery came with my Chrysler LeBaron. It's dated December 2008, and it still starts an engine. And I'm not sure how this battery has been this fortune to live this long. This battery is of high school age, if it could talk and think. So we got these alligator clips. We have the probe itself. You'll kind of see, I'm sure you get an idea of what this does. If you've seen one of these, you know what this is. If you haven't, this is a game changer for automotive and just 12 and 24 volt electrical diagnostics. So this thing is always powered by your car battery or whatnot. And you have a little rocker switch here. This probe can do both hot, we got 12.6, perfectly healthy battery, or ground. So you can actually use this, actually I should have, let me grab a light. Not like a lighter, but like a light bulb. 
if I can find one. That's always the question. Okay. So the nice thing about this tool is it is one-handed operation. So I can clip this on here, which by the way, you don't, you don't need this if your circuit is grounded or has a hot signal, you can just touch the probe and send it hot or ground, depending on what you're trying to do. But you can also test stuff directly in your hand like that. And you see I can send ground to it, but because this is also ground, it's not going to do anything. It also has a um, ohm meter. Um, which it doesn't seem to read. It's reading zero, so I don't know how sensitive that is. I haven't really uh, messed with it. But it also has a, uh, a basic, very basic, but very useful oscilloscope. And I haven't used this much, but uh, it will actually tell you the, the frequency of an alternating current uh, source or signal. Uh, I don't know how high this goes. I think it only goes to 24 volts, but I'll post a link in the description for anyone that wants one. I went with Altel. They make all different brands of these. But let's try it on something. I've never tried this, but it has a speaker. So you can actually use this for audio system diagnostics. I have a uh, nut button. I, ha I had a nut button. Oh, you're kidding me. It just worked off camera. Hold on. I need to draw a new battery for this. Hold on, let's put new batteries in it. Those batteries are very old. Me and the nut button go way back. Okay. It was the power switch, but we'll put new batteries in it anyway. It deserves new batteries. So this is the nut button. And uh, Teen, I put uh, a lead on the preamp signal so that I could plug it into my car stereo and uh, be it absolutely obnoxious at car shows. But we can also, theoretically, plug our probe into it. And it'll actually play the audio through the speaker on the probe. And uh, it'll display the waveform, the duty cycle, the frequency if it can figure it out fast enough and your maximum and minimum voltage, because some signals will not go down to zero volts. Uh, so this, this tool is excellent. Uh, it has a cigarette lighter style plug as well. So if you're just quickly diagnosing something uh, in your car, you can power it that way too. I prefer this because a lot of cars, especially newer ones, use a, uh, a switched accessory port, which I personally hate. I'm more than capable of keeping my battery from draining when I charge my phone. But alas, I guess the automakers disagree there. Um, they want to drain the battery with their tech. So using it the other night, someone broke down outside my garage here and uh, I tried to help them out. We, f we quickly diagnosed with this tool that battery was not charging from the alternator. The alternator was bad. Um, I tried energizing the on signal circuit on the alternator to try and uh, force the alternator to turn on in case there was a problem with the truck, and it would not turn on. So uh, we just assumed that he got a bad rebuilt alternator or he has another problem in his truck that killed it. And uh, we were able to pretty quickly conclude that we're wasting time trying to get the alternator to run. We just had to charge his batteries and uh, give him enough uh, power to get him home uh, just down the road. So that's that and as you can see to check the voltage on this battery 
It's an easy one-handed operation. To use a voltmeter, you can get clips for these, but um, these meters are never um, powered from your, um, your battery. So you have to rely on the battery inside of these and they're hard to read. They're hard to use in an automotive setting. This is more of a bench tool in my opinion. So there's that. So let me, let me pack this up real quick. And is the camera still going? I'd really hate to be halfway into this spiel and my camera is just like, nah. All right, so we got this. Let's put this away. We did the chainsaw. All right, number, so that was number three. We're counting down. Chainsaw is number four. I'm not counting. I'm going to put numbers on the screen. Yeah, let's do these, because number one, I'm going to have to move the camera, I think. All right. Number two. Everyone's like, oh, no, he's getting out the crimps, the poor man's electrical connections. Now, I have mixed feelings about these two. They're very susceptible to corrosion. They're very susceptible to coming apart especially if you don't do them right. Um, usually you have these tools, which just makes them feel even more primitive and uh, just unbearable to work with. Um, but these suck. These absolutely suck. These are not much better because they're still stamped metal. Uh, this one has a nice wire stripper in it. This is a Harbor Freight. Th these are like eight bucks, at least when I bought it before. I bought it in the before four times, I can't say. Um, what caused there to be a before four times because I don't want to get in trouble with the tube. Um, but this one has a similar mechanism. Still pretty uncomfortable to use. It's pretty inconsistent. I actually you can't really see it on camera, but I'll put some close-ups. Um, it, it just, it, it, that would not be a clean crimp. I'm not a fan of that. So, this tool I got this on Amazon. This is probably a clone of a, of a brand name tool. This has actual teeth on it. And when you put your bit in there, it ratchets. And you can actually very quickly get a very good and consistent crimp every time. I have used this to do an entire electrical project um, post trailer wire video. I know everyone gives me hell for using these on a cargo trailer, but you know what? Those lights are still working. I know, I know these are terrible, but they work. They're considered entered with what you would use. Um, these are not marine rated, but they make marine rated ones. These tools are all acceptable to use in the automotive space, um, albeit they have their, um, their shortcomings and there are much better products you can use. But these are cheap, they're readily available. Um, so I keep one of these in my toolbox. And uh, for quick basic jobs where wiring is not uh, susceptible to water, I just use my Harbor Freight or my Horror Freight um, terminal set. And they're perfectly fine for most stuff, uh, especially if you do it right. So my last Thing I want to show you is actually a multi-part system and let me grab these they're expensive but I think they're practical Milwaukee pack out wall brackets and I'll we'll take the camera over there and I'll demonstrate them on the wall but um, I have one for my M12 batteries uh, because these are relatively expensive. I want to know where they are at all times. And I know I could probably 3D print something or, or make a pegboard rig for them. But this was like 20 bucks. The wall plate, I think, is 30 bucks, um, which the wall plate has room for more than just one of these. So 
yes, it's expensive and it's um, like the Yeti equivalent of pegboard, I guess. It's just, it's a very premium product. It's expensive, it's rigid, um, but I think it's also, uh, it's great for stuff like this that you use a lot. You're gonna be pulling batteries off of this and putting them back on all the time and it's not gonna sag like MDF uh, particle boards. So I think these are cool. I also got one for um, paper towels. I ended up using it for tape for now because I am always losing all my rolls of tape. So now I know where my electrical tape is, my painter's tape, my drywall repair tape, because uh, I keep finding problems with the drywall in this house because the previous people that lived here did not know how to take care of the house. So I have a whole roll of that for when I find new uh, half-assed uh, drywall patches. So let's go over the wall. I'll demonstrate it. I have a couple other pack-out accessories that I've used in the past um, that I've hung up on there as well. So here is the pack out wall plate and uh, you might be saying, well, how is this better than pegboard? There's less holes. Well, first off, this is incredibly rigid. Um, I mean, it can't hold as much stuff as pegboard, but really when's the last time you've been able to easily pull tools um, down off your pegboard without bumping other tools or knocking other tools off? So this just goes on like this and you can lock it that keeps it from moving. So if you had this mounted in a van or a truck, uh, which this can also be mounted horizontally, by the way, but I mounted it on the wall, um, you know, they'll stay in place. And I got a, my other one right here. I can put two of these small ones on there. Uh, I can put one of these. I can put one of these across two. I can stack these within reason because the further out these come, the more uh, torque that's putting on that bracket. Um, but I think these wall brackets are good for like 75 pounds. Don't quote me on that, but Milwaukee uh, has their numbers in bold right on the, the listing photos. Uh, but yeah, this is a great product to get stuff off the floor. So I'm probably gonna get more of these. They're, they they kind of tessellate into each other. Um, and I have a few more of these cases. Um, they're great to travel with. If I'm going on a trip, we went on that North Dakota trip, I packed one of these with light bulbs and, and uh, electrical stuff, and we actually ended up having to replace the trailer lighting when we got there because the trailer's bouncing so much. So these are great because you can throw them in the truck bed. They got a waterproof seal. I started buying these six years ago, uh, and I love them. But I also have one that I bought fairly recently as well. Let me grab that. So this one was hard to justify because it's basically just an overpriced milk crate. This was $50, but I can pretty easily, fairly easily, take it down one-handed. And then if I can find the hooks, I can hook it right on there. And this, I don't think these lock, but um, these also lock to the horizontal stack. So if this was mounted horizontally, this would actually interlock like that. But these do hang like this, which is great. If you're moving stuff around a lot, I keep all my buffing stuff in this because I can take it off the stack or if I need it out of the way and I'm working over here, I can just hang it right here and uh, I know exactly where it is. But then I can quickly take it down. These stack and interlock with other crates as well. But yeah, that is the Milwaukee pack out wall mount plus some wall mount accessories. So back to Barneal. Thank you so much for watching. Um, I know I haven't put out a video in a while and I'm gonna try and put out some videos. I am actually, I am filming. I am doing a lot 
on camera. It's just getting to the editing. Uh, editing is, editing takes longer than it does to film. If you've never done videos before, um, any editor can tell you that. For every minute of footage, for every minute of completed footage, it takes about an hour to edit. Um, so that's why it takes so long for a busy, uh, full-time working guy like me to put out videos, but I really appreciate uh, all my all my existing and new subscribers for uh, watching, and uh, we'll see you in the next video.